Hey there, I'm Michael and welcome to Meeple Box and this time we're talking about code names. Now, code names is a party game for teams. And on that team, one person will be looking at this key card here, and this will tell them which of these words are for their agents, which are for the enemy agents, which are innocent bystanders, and which is the assassin. The whole nature of this game is that it's about word association. The person who's looking at this keycard here will be trying to get their team to guess as many words as possible with a single turn. So they'll give a one word clue and a number. And that number relates to how many cards fit that clue. So looking at the grid here, I am red, I could say wet free. And I could be meaning water here, slug, and beach. But there's also England off in the corner here. And England's kind of associated with being wet, so my team might guess England, which would be wrong. It would be an innocent bystander. If they guessed the assassin, we'd lose the game. If they guessed an opposing team, we just give the opposing team a point and end our turn. And if we guess an innocent bystander, it just ends our turn. The whole thing is that you need to guess all of yours before your opponents guess theirs. And there is a kind of rules variant for doing two or three players, which does work surprisingly well where you're just on your own team trying to do as best as you can. So that is code names. As you guess the words, you just mark them off with these cardboard tokens. So let's now take a look at what reviewers think of this game. Hello, this is Board Deck and Dice's opinion on code names for Meeple Box. Code names and code names pictures are two uh, party games um, or team games at the very least. Some people don't consider them party because of the potential stress involved. I have to say that our code names has worked brilliantly for me and um, even got my dad playing games, which may not sound like much, but is incredible. Um, so yeah, Codenames has worked really, really well. Uh, sometimes people struggle with the links between the words, um, but something that fixes that is Codenames Pictures. Now I'm someone who loves words and loves to, I'm not artistic in a drawing kind of creating kind of sense that way, but with words I really love them, but I think visually. So Codenames Pictures has been the more successful game for me. Um, I found that in Codenames Pictures you're more likely to get a clue that gives you more options. So some of them in Codenames uh, with the words, more often than not some people will give a clue that relates to one or two words um, sometimes more, depending on the words, but in Codenames Pictures, there's often a link between at least two pictures, and very rarely do you get people giving the clues for just one uh, picture. It's often a group of pictures, um, but it still has the tension, it still has the creative thing of people going wrong. I gave a clue for, um, was it games or toys or toys, toys, and there was a toy robot and a yo yo, and I thought, it's a dead cert, they've got to go for that. I didn't notice the dinosaur riding the Penny Farthing, which apparently is a toy, a uh, toy that I've never heard of. Stupid team. Um, so yeah, Codenames is great. Um, easy to learn. Slightly improved rules with the extra clue, with extra guesses you get in Codename pictures as well. I'll play that way with Codenames uh, words or Codenames. And of course, you can mix the two together and make a giant um, a, a grid made of words and pictures. I just think Codenames for the price, for the amount of content you get in there, um, it's, it's a worthy buy and a worthy addition to anyone's collection. Thanks very much. I've been Board Deck and Dice and we'll see you next time. Codenames is an amazingly popular game. It's a cool party game and it sold 2 million units and I do like it. I feel like it makes you feel really clever when you manage to link a whole bunch of words together. Even if you link seven and your team guesses five of them, you've done amazingly well. Do you feel you? And then if you're going through a game and then you're generally 
struggling to find a clue that even links to, and then he managed to find one that links free. You think, yeah, but being on the team, it's not quite as exciting. You don't have this puzzle to go through. And for me here, it falls slightly short. With six players, you do get the talking and bits of discussion and table talk. But I would personally prefer something either a bit more thinky or a bit more boisterous. Now, I do prefer the pictures version slightly. It appeals to my mind of thinking. And if you like the um, idea of linking things together, check that out. But if you're like me and you enjoy the puzzle of trying to link them but aren't so keen on just guessing, then, like me... I'm super keen and looking forward to the cooperative version where both people are spy masters and yeah. Code names. Code names is fantastic. I nominated this as the best party game for Review Wars and I still feel that way. I think it can play the lower numbers, it's not really where it stands, but it is great once you get four or more people. Having those teams, it works fantastically well. The whole, oh, I didn't see that association. Oh, what are you guessing that for? The Just the atmosphere it creates at a table is a party atmosphere. And that is why I think this is an absolutely fantastic game. But it's not like a lot of party games where it's just complete randomness, chaos and silliness without an actual game there. There is still a game here. You feel like you are playing. You're not just randomly putting out funny sounding cards or whatever. This is a game. And so, yeah, Code Names by Czech Games Edition is definitely a game I think everyone should go out and try. It's really cheap and really good. Mage Knight, a very long and complicated strategy game. Code Names, a 10 minute party game. Same designer. Well then, it's innovative. A game with a novel concept that's easy to learn and has a short playtime. It makes the leader feel smart, coming up with clever clues, and makes your team feel just as smart, deducting the correct words. It's also not fun. Of course, the definition of fun can vary to multiple people, and maybe Codenames is totally tubular and I'm just a dum-dum. However, I feel the game rewards a specific skill, word association. If you don't have the skill, you'll do badly at the game, drag your team down, and generally have a bad time. In addition to this, having 25 words dumped in front of you at the start of the game is a bit much. A lot of modern games take the route of gradually giving players more options so the game state doesn't feel overwhelming, and to instill a sense of narrative arc. Codenames is hard to pass at the start of the game, often leading to a downtime filled with stony silence, and incredibly easy at the end, leading to an anticlimax. The feel of the game is similar to Euro games. It's still a puzzle, just a linguistic one instead of a logic one, and it evokes the same feel. Learning the game and becoming better at it over time is part of a Eurogame's charm. In a party game, though, for me it straddles that line between social game and gamer's game and becomes pretty unappealing as a result. Playing with non-gamers, I'd rather bust out Dixit, which has the same sort of deduction but with a looser framework that makes the game more about socialising than winning or losing. Playing with gamers, I'd rather bust out a big box game. Or if I just had to fill a bit of time, something like Matainai. However, if I ever have to host a function for a group of English enthusiasts, Codenames will be first in the line for the entertainment. Codenames, one. Hmm. Ha. Hi, Russell here from the Black Cat Pop Culture blog, with my opinion on Codenames. Overall, I'm a fan. Alright, so everyone I've played this game with, from frequent gamers, more casual gamers, to even my parents and in-laws, have really enjoyed this one. What I really like is just how easy it is to set up, how easy it is to learn, and how easy it is to teach. I find that putting codenames on the table always leads to multiple rounds. It's the game of not just one, but just one more. Alright, it's also great for groups of any number. 
I know on the box it does say two to eight, but I find you can use it for larger groups as long as the numbers remain even. It's also something that's really easy to understand once you see it played while still having a level of strategy. It hurts your brain if you're trying to think up that really great clue, but it also makes you feel really clever when you actually get an answer correct. It's also really apparent that the designer has really agonised over the word choices in this game. Really keeps a really nice. It keeps a really nice balance of the difficulty of the experience. The one negative I do have is with the theme, because it's an abstract experience when you're kind of matching grids that look like this with yeah, random words. Explaining it in the context of spies, agents, spy masters, I got a lot of these kind of looks. Blank stares, confusion, when I was first describing it to new players. So, thank you to my parents for this one. But I now describe it to people as battleship with words. So, to wrap up, this is a really solid party game that anyone can play and in my opinion I think it's pretty great because it does what a lot of my favourite games do. It uses your own creativity and your own knowledge instead of relying on rigid rules on the table itself. So thanks for listening. Thanks to Two Can Play That Game for letting me express my opinion. You can follow me on Twitter at Russ W. Wilkinson for more of me and more of my random thoughts. Thank you. The components of this game are excellent, as you expect from Czech Games Edition. The cards are made out of decent quality material and the items that you're going to be handling a lot, for example, the spy tiles are of thick cardstock. So really, the artwork is great, really clear, and the components are good and the general layout is really nice and easy to understand and work around. The rule book is equally nice and small, very clear, good illustrations. It's easy to learn and easy to teach to others, which is exactly what you need with a party game. This is a really fun multiplayer game. Although I have trouble getting it to the table sometimes, mainly because when you tell people that it's a word association game and you're having to cross-reference against the key to work out what clues to go for at the same time having to double check to make sure that your clue doesn't accidentally uh, point to one of your opponent's clues people start to get a bit hesitant about playing it it says that it's the um, number one board game uh, party game on board game geek parties and social gatherings can sometimes be a bit noisy and I find that that's situation isn't conducive to me coming up with decent clues so I end up just giving one word, um, clues for one word, uh, one tile um, which is fine but doesn't really progress the game as well. Also you need to be careful of a bit of analysis paralysis kicking in for the reasons I've given. Um, so using a, a, like a time limit, the game comes with a timer but I find a bit longer is necessary. Uh, maybe two minutes is a, a good amount of time. But I suppose therein lies the game. Um, you know, I am definitely guilty of taking games a bit too seriously at times. Uh, it's designed as a, a party game for a reason, not just so you can take it to parties, but because it's meant to be uh, a fun way of playing, more relaxed, haven't got to take it too seriously. In which case, just give a clue. Yes, maybe people are going to point the, to the wrong tiles. Yes, maybe you're going to lose points. But it's not the end of the world. It's a 15 minute game and once you've played you just do a second round. New spy masters so everyone gets a chance to play. So in short if you often play board games with large numbers of friends then I'd definitely re recommend getting this game. If you're looking for a game to take to an actual party 
then I'd probably steer clear and go for something far more accessible, for example, Telestrations. So that's what people think of Codenames by Czech Games Edition. Do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel as well as our contributors' videos, and do also share and subscribe to the channel. And as always, thanks for watching, and bye for now.